Hello. Welcome back to Honest Reviews. I know. It's been years since I've done one of these videos. So today I'm going to talk about the perfect thriller, No Country for Old Men. No Country for Old Men is the 20, 2007, sorry, 2007 Academy Award winning film for Academy Awards. Directed and screened by Joel and Ethan Cohen, the Cohen brothers, who have done Fargo, Big Lebowski, and recently The Ballad of Buster Strode. Now, the plot of this movie is all about money and drugs. And it's about, as I saw the Corner McCarthy album, No Country for Old Man, which I actually have. I actually have it right here. Anyway, so just to give you a basic plot, the movie begins with Sugar being arrested. I know I was. Some of the old time sheriffs never. I just love that opening dialogue by Tommy Lee Jones, who does it perfectly. Roger Roger Ebert says it's such an amazing opening line, opening such that Tommy Lee Jones reads it with such rigor and force that it seems so almost apocalyptic, pretty much. Yeah, this scene is amazing, the opening. And the cinematography by Roger Deakins is just great. Like I said, I think it's one of the best DPs ever. Uh, up there to Bill Pope and Emanola Bilnitsky. I hope I said his name right. I'm fucking asking. I should be able to. Anyway, mm -mm. they continue to arrest Sugar, and in one of the greatest scenes in cinema history, Sugar escapes his cuffs and kills the deputy. He takes his car, kills a man, which I actually made fun of in a Human Giant skit by saying to sell cars for a professor. There's an extra line in the book where he says, I don't want you to blow in the car. Then we see Llewellyn Moss, who finds money after he finds a guy who wants water. Then he just finds money from a drug deal. Then he goes home, has a talk with Carly Jean, his wife. Then he goes back to give the man water, but then is chased by Mexicans who are after the money. So after that, he escapes. He makes it home. Well, he's not. Kind of. Whatever. And here is one of the most greatest scenes in cinematic history, the scene with the gas station clerk and Anton Sugar. And uh, in the whole scene, in the book it's a little more long and overdone, but I believe in the movie, this is the reason I believe that the Coen Brothers wholeheartedly deserve the Best Adapted Screenplay Award, because this scene is a lot longer in the book and really if it went the way to win the book than in the movie it wouldn't work. I mean, here it just does one great line. It's like, don't put it in your pocket. And we talk about the coin, the coin toss. Don't put it in your pocket. It'll become another bitch to change, which it is. And I think that line right there pretty much sums up everything that should have been said. That was said in a really long diatribe by Alan the Sugar in the book. Water. Where do you want me to put it? Anywhere not in your pocket. Water will be mixed in with the others and become just a coin. Which it is. Knowing that it was Llewellyn Moss who stole the money getting the inspection off his truck. He goes to look for him. But he ends up in, with a lady who won't give him information. And it's a pretty funny scene. Kind of comedic. And she's only saved because there's someone else in the room, in the bathroom. Yep. Now, we are about an hour in to the movie. To the movie. And... And we have this tense scene where Llewellyn realizes that Sugar is attacking him with a beeper. And this whole scene just with the cinematography and everything. It's so intense and so intense to watch that it makes any Michael Bay Transformer big action scene look like child's play. I really want to see in the fact that there's very, very little score in this entire scene, and actually in this entire movie. I believe the entire score of this movie is only 18 minutes long, and that's like nothing for a full length movie. And, um, yeah. All you really hear are the gunshots and everything going around it. I mean, this is just. Fantastic. 
I mean, this is a cow and mouse game where the cat and mouse don't really even meet. They're not even in the same shot at any time. If they are, they barely are. The cow and mouse never meet. Uh, I mean, I don't want to spoil much, but they never really meet each other. They just kind of cross paths, but they have their three stories going on at the same time. But they never actually, you know, meet. And I think that's really important to this movie. And, uh, yeah. I mean, I think this movie is just simply amazing when it comes to stuff like that. I think the makes this a great thriller is the lack of music and the minimalist sound design and just basically a bunch of other stuff that makes it amazing. I think it's very important to show that Sugar is human still, even though it's a psychopath. That he even he can get hurt. So I think this scene is very important to have, in my opinion, at least. Maybe people don't want to see how hard about him get naked and kill himself, but whatever. What do they know? They're not filmmakers. The Coen brothers know what they're doing. God damn it, they know what they're fucking doing. They know what they're fucking doing. Now, this scene is actually pretty well shot, like the whole movie. So I don't see any problem with it at all. I enjoy this scene a lot. Yeah. Oh, there's the glory shot right there. Yeah, there you go. Work it. Work it. Javier, work it. Yep. This is exactly what we need to see. Sugar in a vulnerable place to know that, yes, even though he's known like the Bonic Plague by Carson Wells, he can still get injured. So I think this scene is pretty important. So I would keep it in if I was the Coen Brothers. Because they did edit this movie, they got more for editing the meaning, they would want like the four fucking Oscars that night. But, like because they go under the name Drugs Jenkins. This is a Carson, somebody's been hired to go after Sugar. And he's trying to save Llewellyn, but Llewellyn doesn't want to. And Carly Jean wants, as Sheriff Tom, Tom Bell was in the voice at the beginning, to help Llewellyn as well, from the bad guys. So yeah, that's why she's visiting him right now, to tell him where Llewellyn is. No, not, not this scene. He'll tell her later. But Ed, Tom is offering their help to save New Orleans in this scene. He's, he's telling her that there's some bad, bad mombres going after him. That Carly Jean would never know. And Carly Jean is pretty confident that Llewellyn can take all commerce, as she says. I don't know what that's really meant. I think she meant she could take on anything. And now, Edith like Tomville tells a story about a guy who would uh, execute uh, sheep or borregos or whatever. Anyway, something happened, and then, and then Charlie fucked up his arm, shoulder. Basically, the whole thing is, even with the certainty of a guy killing a sheep, even that way, nothing is certain. That's basically what he was trying to say. Nothing is certain. Nothing is certain. And this movie's tagline is, there are no clean getaways. So I think this also goes into this whole movie's whole uh, theme about fate and what happens to you being fate. And Ed Tom promises he'll make the well and safe. And it's funny because Carla Jean asked, why the heck did she even tell him that story? And Ed Tom is more like, I don't know, I just did. Just cuz. Why you tell me that, Cher? I don't know. Ed Tom's great. John Lee Jones is amazing in this movie. My mind He plays the old guy great. Now Carson Wells has found where the money is. Where Llewellyn when going into Mexico threw it over the border wall or at least a fence, into the river grand. So now Carson knows where the money is. He has a leverage for Sugar. And remember, he promised to protect Llewellyn Moss from Sugar. So Sugar finds out, and because he knows he's hungry, and kills Carson Wells. And now he talks to fucking Llewellyn. And he makes him a deal. He says he can't save himself, but 
He can save Carly Jean if he wants to. But uh, Llewellyn doesn't really take that very well. Llewellyn wants to kill Sugar. Uh, the new Tarantino movie title, Kill Sugar. That would be a good one. Alright, this thing, this fucking also goes into the whole thing about fate. Literally, this world dress Mexican in a suit is actually part of the cartel. And just because of his loose lift mother in law, just the fate of that, she will tell the cartel guy where Llewellyn is in El Paso. The exact motel and everything. Yes. His mother in law condemned him to death. That the ones even get they see a death scene, but then they realize that's what happens in the book too. So it's a pretty faithful adaptation of the book. But I think it's converse to one thing about being a writer director duo is one can hold the spine of the book open while the other one types. Now in this scene, well, uh, Ed Tom visits somebody from his past, who tells him that all this stuff that's going on is nothing new. That this country has always been for noble men for the longest time. And now we get the final scene with Carly Jean. <laughs> you see what I did there? Anyway, so what happens is Sugar says he kept the promise to his to his husband, her husband that he'll kill him. And this is also a coin toss, but she says it's not the coin that's at play. It's just him. You don't have to do this. It's way. Fucking Anton Sugar should have met his maker here and died, but no. Fate says he gets to live. Well, the it was about meeting him in town somewhere. You can give me some money. Now we get the final scene where Ed Bell talks about dreams with his dad. The second one. And one of them was really about how he's going to meet him one day. Times. He's getting old. He knows his time is almost passing. Going through the mountains for the night. Then I woke up. And that was No Country for Old Men, and what I believe to be the perfect thriller. It's got everything it needs. A great book to be based off, great performances, deserving of the Best Academy Award for Supporting Actor for Ray Bardem. I mean, this movie is just amazing. It's the perfect thriller, really. The scenes are so intense, it makes you on the edge of your seat. And that's all I have to really say about it. Uh, if you want to talk about the movie, comment below. I have a movie coming out soon. It's called Artist. I hope to shoot it as soon as possible. I'll leave that out to you guys soon. And then we'll be on demand. Alright. See ya.